please understand how bullying affects people. I think everyone in the world should have their own human rights. If no one had a human right, this world would be a big mess. We teamed together and decided that this was a big move for the city of Richmond for us to become a human rights city. We researched what that involved, what that would look like, and took it through all of the channels, uh, including you know the vote and ratification of our city council, changed our ordinance, changed our, our, our direction, uh, because we thought that in looking at the Universal Declaration of, of Human Rights, that that was something that we needed to adopt in the city of Richmond. And the young people just happened to be our one of our first targets. Uh, to integrate the uh, human rights philosophy into the this city of Richmond. This is the meeting of the Education Committee for the City of Richmond Human Rights and Human Relations Commission. So at this time, I will turn the meeting over to Dr. Betty. And let me just start by saying a special thanks to all of the faculty, the teachers, the principal, the parents, uh, and everyone that participated in this project. The whole idea is to have the students really take an inward uh, perspective of what it means Dr. Betty is chairs the education committee of our human rights human relations commission and she's taken our education committee to an entire different level Dr. Betty Burns Wright she truly does care about education whatever needs to be done to bring these young people along she's there One of the things we're doing, we are partnering, partnering with the schools to just add another dimension to these children's lives so that they have something to think about. On December 10, 1948, the General Assembly of the United Nations adopted and proclaimed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This declaration guarantees the right of all people and encompasses a broad spectrum of economic, social, cultural, political, and civil rights. December 10th continues to be recognized as Human Rights Day worldwide. Activities and celebrations mark the importance of this universal declaration. It's one thing to deal with adults, but who do we, who better to start with than to start with educating our young people because they then will grow up in this city understanding that they have many rights that uh, some of our adults still don't understand right now. So you have to learn a little bit more as you get older about how to claim your rights. You're taking the first step tonight and I am so thrilled and excited to be here to give you special students a copy of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And we'll come back another time, talk more about... Here in the Bay Area, in the city of Richmond, to get the concept of justice and fairness and non-discrimination into the heads of little kids who are of all backgrounds, many of whom have seen acts of violence that I probably would faint away at, okay? They've, they're living tough lives, some of them, and they're bringing in their sweetness, their goodness, their dedication, their insistence that they've got a right to live a peaceable, decent life, and their friends too. And once you know what your rights are, you can then stand up and speak out in favor of getting those rights for yourself, for your older sister, for your younger brother, for your mom and dad, and all your relatives. So until you know you've got rights, you can't do much about them. What we're going to do today is give everybody who comes up here for a certificate her or his own copy of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This is put out by the United Nations, and it's meant for every person who's born. It doesn't matter where you're from, 
who you are, what, how much money you have, what language you speak, what religion you believe in. This is for every person on earth. Pretty important. The students have really gone inwardly and done some creative writing about what, what violates their human rights. And so tonight you're going to get to hear some of their literary work because this is the first writing, their really uh, expressive writing. I am a black woman, as tall as a cypress, strong beyond all definitions, still defined place and time and circumstance, assailed and pervious in destruction. Look on me and be renewed. The children felt importance that they were able to do that, where they were able to sit in the chair where the mayor sits, because a lot of times our children's voices are not heard, and they're kind of kept in the background. And seeing them up here made them proud. I mean, I saw smiles on their face, like, you know, we're here for something. We're not just here because, you know, we're going to sit in the back. But they were here because of the importance to them, and we know that their feelings and that they count. My teacher's name is Mr. Watson. What it meant for me as a teacher was uh, I was instilled with hope, not just hope, uh, very much hope for the future because I saw my students uh, dig deep and what they came up with was solutions and they provide what they, they provided solutions for a lot of the situations that are we, we're dealing with as a society. They have answers to at the young age that they have them right now and I was inspired. I was once in first grade and I um, was going to the restroom and I saw two third um, graders walking up to me. One other boy came up and pushed me down to the floor and the other one grabbed me and pushed me to the wall. I felt like I was going to get hurt. Then one of the other boys came to my wrist and pulled me and swung me across the hallway all the way to the door. And when I got up, I ran. The next day, when I went to get water because I was out of breath of running all the way around the school, one of the, both of the boys came back and I said, please don't hurt me. And they pushed me down. But that, that day was lucky because I had a lady named Miss Smith who came and and she protected me. She took both of the boys down to the office and suspended them for two days. And I just, even though Miss Smith is not here, I just want to thank her for helping me. No one hit me or pushed me over. I just got teased for my hair and my earrings. I am a boy with rights to dress and look the way I want to in the United States. I don't think police understand how bullying affects people. This is how God most of my I didn't make many friends in school because I was extremely self-conscious. Self in the way that I am, and if I had a way, I wouldn't have spoken to anyone. Not because I am mean and horrible. I just, I was just hurting inside, and I, it made me quite person. 
I still am. I think the bully made me even shyer, which I am overcoming. I'm coming out of my shell. It has made me nervous being around school students. These days, as I'm worried, they will do the same. I think everyone in the world should have their own human rights. If no one had a human right, this world would be a big mess. There's a number of rights and ideas to do to start being a leader. I have three types of human rights that are my favorite. One human right that I love is to be yourself wherever you go. The reason why I love this right is because no matter what you do or what you wear, you will look fine. My second human right is to be free no matter what. You are free to do anything you want to. If you want to be a doctor or a teacher, you are free to be one. And my last human right is to have your own opinion. No one can judge your opinion. Okay. Okay. Human rights are important for eight awesome reasons. First, human rights are important because they enable you to be free. Second, human rights are important because they give you the ability to be proud of the skin tone you have. Third, human rights are important because they give you, I mean, because they let you have friends that are a different skin tone than yourself. Fourth, human rights are important because they give you the right to live wherever you want to to live. Fifth, human rights are important because they give you the right, um, give you the right to not be bullied or judged because of your size or weight, your skin tone. Sixth, human rights give you the right to be free and also to be yourself. Seventh, human rights are important because they give you the Right to be in, to the, um to go anywhere you want to. It's very much important because they give you the right to your home. Hi, I'm Tiffany from Southern Shadows Elementary. What has happened to me? Lately, you hear many cases of anxiety and or depression in me. Today, five to eight times as many high school students and college students meet the criteria for a diagnosis of major depression and or an anxiety disorder as was true half a century ago. I believe this is because their parents have decided what their kids are going to be as adults, not telling their children. They have the freedom not to worry about living their life doing something they don't want to. Us as kids deserve to be what we want. We have the right to dream of what we want to be with high hopes. You may believe we don't know what we want, but that doesn't mean you can't let us choose. Being scared of your future is wrong. Kids have thought about taking their own lives because of the planned future they have. I know our parents want to do the best for us, but we want to do what makes us happy. They are being imbued with a sense of, I've got a right not to have to deal with this stuff. I've got a right to a better life. And they're not saying it meanly or viciously or violently. They're saying, we're going to work together to make this better because they've got this school and this city and this commission behind them. It's, it's a unique phenomenon. It is not happening anywhere else. And of all places, if you look at it that way, here in the Bay Area in the city of Richmond, to get the concept of justice and fairness and non-discrimination into the heads of little kids who are of all backgrounds, many of whom have seen acts of violence that I probably would faint away at, okay? They've, they're living tough lives, some of them, and they're bringing in their sweetness, their goodness, their dedication, their insistence that they've got a right to live a peaceable, decent life, and their friends too. I'm from Cesar Chavez Elementary School, and I'm going to talk to you why women should get paid equally as men. There's a school in the United States that, that one lady was getting paid less than a guy. St statistics show that women get paid less than 77% than men. If we go to the same college and get the same grade, then why don't we get paid equally? Just because of our gender and our size? Don't judge a person before you get to know them. What if a woman was good at being a mechanic and a guy good at nursing? Judging a person before you get to know them is wrong. They could actually be good at something. Us women have the right to get paid equally as men. People have 
have the right to not be bullied. They shouldn't be bullied because of their features, because everyone is like someone. A bully doesn't have the right to bully anybody because people are rich. If you are bullied, you should really tell somebody. You should be able to go to school or work confident. You shouldn't be scared to go to a place thinking that the bully might be there. You should always stand up for yourself and tell the bully you don't like being bullied. This evening, I'm going to be talking about starvation. Did you know that there are kids in the world starving? Well, there are a lot. Well, what can we do about it? It is all right to have food to eat. You would not like to starve. We are the people who are starving right now. We want everyone to have a meal. Everyone here has the right to have food. How can we do this from you? Well, one way is we could for us not to waste food we eat. We want everyone not to starve. Let's help every person who is starving. We want everyone to have a meal and be happy. Remember that the food you waste could go to someone else. Thank you. Racial discrimination is a social issue because people are using the racial differences to segregate who we are. It is an act that treats that treats people of other races differently and without any respect. What we look like, what we act like, and even what we smell like has no comparison to who we are in the inside. They say that Asians can't see because their eyes are full just a bit. They say that Africans are always up to no good. People say something bad about every race, yet when the, they hear something about their race, they don't stop to think that maybe that's how the other people feel when you offend them. Differences is what keeps us together. We have to stay strong because what other people think of you doesn't matter. It's what you think of yourself that counts. Do you know how many sports disabled people can use? People in wheelchairs, for example, can actually participate in the following sports. Basketball, racing, tennis, dance, bowl, hockey, volleyball, and boxing. I bet you have not seen or heard of it before today. I'm sad that people who are disabled are not being a lot of chance to play sports even if some is on a wheelchair. They can still try to use their arms to play sports they, if they want. They need our support and encouragement to achieve their goals. I believe that they have the right to, to have places where they can practice the 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 have the right to proper equipment, coaches and trainers, and opportunities to join competitions. We need to allow them to try and try to become the best they can be. I'd like to call up my special guest, um, Don Gunther, MD, who is um, a human rights advocate in her own way. She's working with a project in India, uh, The Forgotten Faces of AIDS. Part of the reason that we don't hear quite so much about what's going on with HIV AIDS in India, which is now probably number two, but it's not number one in the world, but there is a very high incidence of HIV, particularly infecting and affecting children. And part of the reason that we don't hear a lot about it is because many of the families who are known to be uh, affected or infected with HIV are of, of, what, of what would be called in India a lower caste system, lower social system. And this is where um, it begins to get into the areas of human rights. And uh, on the positive side, uh, through the intervention of the Clinton Foundation and former President Clinton himself and the Indian government, uh, treatment is being provided um, specifically for those who are infected with HIV and particularly special doses of the me uh, medications for children. Um, so the highlight of uh, my project, uh, uh, having the opportunity to photograph various works of various organizations since 2005, was a one-year follow-up project of 40 families representing 64,000 families of children who were either infected with HIV or affected by it in that they had lost parents and were being raised by grandparents or by relatives or were simply orphaned. Uh, and uh, we followed these children in four high-incident states in India 
uh, and went back one year later to visit them again. And for me, it got me to places in India that I never could have gotten on my own. And, and saw these families that are living with HIV. They're doing well. If you look on my website, forgottenfacesofaids.org, you will see wonderful, smiling, happy children, and you won't know which ones are infected and which ones aren't. The parent participation tonight was powerful. You know, it's just not, a lot of times it's not like it used to be. We have to reach out. There is no certain dynamics. You have to do what works. And sometimes that means thinking outside the box. I want to thank every family that took the time to come out. You didn't leave the young ones with the babysitter. You brought them. And that speaks volumes. And, and it is Again. so vital that the parents support the young ones because it all begins at home. When you create a situation like this, then you're also creating pride of a parent and what's going on at school. So I think you probably had a mixture of both, some people that were really involved in school before and some that were not. I think we, we had what was a good example of parent and teacher communication going on. And even if it is that there wasn't parent-teacher communication in the process, the parents that came out and saw the outcomes of this that happened from school and teachers and how they were proud of what came out of it, there'll be a parent-teacher in communication after tonight. So it's hard to say if all of this has been an ongoing thing, but when you create a situation like this, then you're also creating pride of a parent and what's going on at school. Before I talk about why racism is a problem, does anybody know what racism is? If you don't know what racism is, racism is when you judge someone about their skin color, race, or even how they look. Do you think that racism is funny or not? I strongly believe that racism isn't funny. Racism isn't funny because you could hurt the person's feelings, which is a bad thing because some people might isolate themselves from other people which can also lead to suicide. Racism is a form of bullying because you are someone verbally. People judge you by your look, accent, culture, and how good you're at, at something. If you're a victim. This is our first year engaging in this project, and I am so pleased to be involved. I want to thank the commission for seeking uh, a job as a partner. We will continue to partner with you, so please do not forget us. Um, also, I want to thank Mr. Mayor and the other teachers who were so passionate. Seeing the great turnout of all these parents and the community outreach that, that we did tonight, and just hearing all these different topics. I heard immigration. I heard domestic violence issues. I heard <laughs> bullying issues. I heard LGBT. I heard fair employment. I heard homelessness. And, and they're just so brave these girls who had the girl who was bullied in the corridor by boys twice once then twice she has the courage to stand there and say so i'd be shaking she has courage and she can go anywhere with that when one girl was talking about domestic violence i looked at the woman standing behind her i don't know if it was her mother or her aunt or what i said to myself <laughs> That woman standing behind the girl talking about them, that woman has experienced domestic violence. Sometimes the kids are wanting to express themselves, but they don't have the appropriate format to do so. I asked the students to talk about something that they were passionate about, and they chose their own topics. This is really, really important. We did start at Chavez three years ago, and it's now growing, and we're just really, really proud of the children, but we're really proud of the parents because it takes all of us to help and educate them. Solo quiero darle las gracias a los niños porque son unos niños muy, muy magníficos, pero también sin el apoyo de los padres eh, no podríamos hacer este tipo de trabajo. Muchas gracias. I've been with the city now almost 32 years, and what I see in the audience tonight is there's a future for this community. And if the students are able to continue in the same path that they began here tonight, then the future of the city, this community, is in very good hands.
you know, I, I work with teachers during the day, I work with principals during the day, and I know how hard you, you guys work. And, and for you to take the time to be here with these kids, it's, it says so much about where your hearts are. I think that it's, it's really important to have this forum, you know, the, uh, the Human Rights uh, Council. Uh, it shows students that uh, it's not an isolated issue, um, that bullying is not isolated, that it's actually, it's an extension of a greater issue regarding human, human rights and how, how people treat each other and the values that we, that we have as a, uh, as a society. So um, it's really important work. It's extending what we do in schools around bullying, um, but it, it also empowers our, our children to see themselves as leader in the, leaders in the community. For the women and men in this city who have brought this to happen, I have never seen it before, and I am bound and determined to make something of it both at Congress when I go to advocate on the Hill. We do our advocacy uh, for the United Nations Association locally, with George Miller, with Barbara Lee, and in Washington in June. We want to have the opportunity for these kids to talk about their experiences, not hide, to work together, whether it's race, gender. We have to make sure as we move forward that they move right underneath us into these chairs and they believe that they can make a difference in the future. I am just very proud to be part of what this commission has, being a small part of what this commission has done for the city of Richmond. They brought together the community and they, in a way that the community is able to show just how much they care. Tonight I think it just uh, showed us the importance of uh, working together uh, with families, with the community, getting everybody involved in the uh, the process of uh, coming up with solutions to a lot of the the social issues that, that we that we're dealing with in the community and in schools and it, it really shows us the importance of coming together to find solutions to to our, our issues if this country as messy as we've gotten has any hope it's on bringing up our leaders of the future with decent standards of fairness and justice and equality and non-discrimination. Wrap it all together under the heading of human rights or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's alive and well here and I just want to keep pouring more water on it.